I'm really excited about this conversation with Phil, who is part of Unchained Capital, because it's a Bitcoin only company which offers some of my favorite products for storing and lending Bitcoin. Phil and I discussed why Unchained focuses only on Bitcoin products and not other cryptos, and how all their products are aligned with Bitcoin's principles. We also deep dive in the three main products they offer: Unchained Vault lending and they are bitcoin otc desk it was a great experience to have a conversation with a company which shares my personal views on the crypto industry so let's get started hi phil thanks for coming on sunny bitcoin thanks so much for having me sunny happy to be here so phil tell us a little bit about your background how you entered uh, crypto and uh, what do you do at unchained uh, capital Sure. Well, I graduated uh, from the university with a, a Bachelor of Arts in Economics, and one of the issues that I had with my degree was it didn't feel like it really explained anything to me. So when I left university, I actually ended up in software implementation in the healthcare industry. In about 2014, at the end of the year, I uh, was at a bar listening to some presentations. It was a, a, a bar be- event where people were giving talks on different subjects. And a woman, a grad student, went up on stage and gave a talk about the history of money and the different innovations, and ended on Bitcoin. And so I, I immediately fell down the rabbit hole, kind of at the end of 2014. And I had the right puzzle pieces uh, in place. I had a, a background in economics, which I didn't think described very much. I had a background in software implementation. When I learned about Bitcoin, uh, my two worlds collided. And since then, I've uh, gotten deep into studying Austrian economics, and I joined up with Unchained Capital in May of 2019. And what I really like about Unchained is that we're a company that is uh, 100% Bitcoin focused. We can only possibly exist if Bitcoin continues to be the dominant cryptocurrency, and we leverage all of the native tools of Bitcoin in order to deliver high quality white glove financial services uh, to all Bitcoiners, but really focused on um, helping out people withholding their own keys. And that's the reason I'm so excited about this podcast because you're one of the few Bitcoin native companies whose principles are aligned with Bitcoin's principles. But of course, we're going to get uh, more um, into it. On LinkedIn, one of your titles is also Bitcoin specialist. So tell us a little bit about that. Sure. So I I left my uh, software job in 2017. So at that time, Bitcoin had just broken about $3,000 and I decided that you know I'd, I'd been studying it long enough. I was passionate about it. It was taking up all of my mental energy, and so I moved full time into Bitcoin. Um, from 2017 to the beginning of 2019, I was going around uh, different cities in the U.S. giving talks. I was uh, writing a series of blogs, just kind of introductory blogs and very um, very casual reading. And I was contracting with a few different companies. In the U.S., along those uh, along that that time period, I was also helping uh, a small client base to claim and sell Bitcoin forks. So, in 2017 and early 2018, there were many teams that were copying Bitcoin, but of course, Bitcoin can't be copied. Uh, so, what people were doing, myself included, were taking the copies that we were just granted and then selling them and converting them from into more Bitcoin. Uh, so, that was a little lucrative kind of side business that I was working on during that time. And then got, like I said, got kind of caught, connected with the Unchained team in May of 2019. And then I've been here ever since helping to grow the team. Yeah, all those um, Bitcoin forks, Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin SV and Bitcoin Diamond were just Bitcoin bonus handouts, right? That was a great time. If you were really lucky, you could get 25% more Bitcoin for Bitcoin Cash. I never hit that, but uh, with with all the forks that I was able to sell, and I think there were about 30 that I, I could claim and sell, uh, I ended up generating roughly 20% extra Bitcoin for my clients. That's amazing. Yeah, that's the problem with Bitcoin. It's never enough. Um, but mm. the about <laughs> us, uh, the the about us page of Unchained uh, says that Unchained Capital was established at block height four three three one seven nine. So please explain that uh, to the listeners what this means. Well, we really wanted to s- signal and double down on this idea that we were Bitcoin native. And uh, one of our co-founders is Drew Bonsell. And, and one of the things that he really likes about the Bitcoin network is that the blockchain is almost like a clock. 
Uh, blocks are found on average every 10 minutes. And over the long run, uh, it becomes in increasingly more accurate as a clock. So we thought that since we're Bitcoin native, uh, we might as well use the block height specifically that we were established. So yes, we've been offering Bitcoin financial services for now over 200,000 blocks, probably closer to 250,000 blocks, which is um, about uh, almost five years now. We were founded kind of the mid to end of 2016. That's, that's the block height. <laughs> Yeah, and this is the reason I love Unchained, you know, and I recommend it on sunnybitcoin.com. You're among the rare companies who truly gets Bitcoin, you know, and this is one amazing example when I was checking the website. So tell us a little bit about the co-founders and their vision for starting Unchained. Sure. So the co-founders are Joe Kelly and Drew Bonsell, and they exited their first company, uh, which was a, a, a big data company called InfoChimps. And I think they, they sold it in either 2015 or early 2016. But they had both caught the Bitcoin bug and were trying to think of another company to start. And what they ended up doing was uh, running some data science on the Bitcoin blockchain. And the Bitcoin blockchain is totally public. The entire database is visible from, from 2009 until today and all the transactions. Uh, so what they put together was a visualization of the Bitcoin blockchain called the HODL waves. And the HODL waves describes, you know, how long Bitcoin has been sitting in a given address uh, for a given time period. And it's a, a, a display of kind of many different colored bands that really show you the sentiment of the Bitcoin network of people who are holding Bitcoin. And what that chart and visualization told them was that people are treating Bitcoin as their long-term savings. So they're holding it for many, many years for the most part. Um, and increasingly that has become true over the years is, is that, you know, there's a, there are still many people who like to day trade Bitcoin, but uh, for a majority of the BTC out there, um, it, it is being held in, you know, private key storage. So people are holding their own keys. It's not on exchanges and they're holding it for many years. And that's what the HODL waves displayed to them. So using that visualization, they then got an idea to start offering financial services built using the tools native to Bitcoin. So what do you sell to people who are trying to hold this for as long as possible? Well, financial services. If Bitcoin is money, then what comes with it? You know, services around those money or that money. So the first product that they that we launched here was actually our Bitcoin collateralized loans. So you can use Bitcoin. Uh, we put it into a multi-signature address, which is a type of Bitcoin address that is constructed with three keys. Uh, and two out of three keys are needed to move the Bitcoin out of the address. So in this arrangement, we can actually distribute keys among multiple different entities. So our clients hold a key, Unchained holds a key, and then a third-party key agent holds the third key. Now, this may sound kind of complicated, but Bitcoin is just a very different beast from, from legacy fiat currencies. So the reason that you would want to do this is because now when you're taking a loan using your most precious asset as collateral, there are no single points of failure for your Bitcoin. So Unchained Capital can't lose your money. Our third party key agent can't lose your money. You can't lose your money. The money is sitting in an address kind of in no man's land for the duration of the loan. And uh, we can lend you US dollars and uh, you can be on your way. You can you know, use it for a home purchase, buy more Bitcoin, you know car to purchase, something like that, operating expenses for many of our companies. Um, so that was our first product, and it was it was very successful. And what we realized is that multi-signature is actually the most secure way to store Bitcoin for the long term, and it's what major many major institutional custodians are actually using behind the scenes is multi-sig, but the difference is that they are holding all of the keys. Uh, we We created this kind of idea called collaborative custody where keys are distributed. So for our vault, our vault program, which was launched in um, March of 2019, just a couple months before I joined the team, we actually give a majority of the keys to our clients. So our clients hold two keys, we hold one key, and that has now become kind of the foundation of our platform. Ultra secure long-term storage, where Unchained Capital is in a single point of failure, but then it also solves many of the problems with just holding Bitcoin, um, such as uh, many of you, I'm sure, have heard of the issues of like people forgetting pins and then getting locked out of their funds. If you're using multi-signature, you have some redundancy and you have some fault tolerance. So our clients are protecting four physical items and they can lose three out of four of them without losing any Bitcoin. So this security system is 
again, native to the protocol. We try to do it as non-proprietary as possible so that you can recover and spend your Bitcoin even if Unchained ceases to exist. Uh, one, of the, one of the mantras that we use is, or we use a couple that are kind of part of Bitcoin. So don't trust, verify, and not your keys, not your Bitcoin. Um, so trying to build a, a financial services platform, um, embracing those mantras is, is what we're working on. It's amazing. Seems like you're the only company and that's the reason I have absolute no hesitation in recommending these products to my audience. I want to get into these products a lot more uh, in detail. Uh, but before that, give us some numbers if you're comfortable to get an idea of the size of Unchained in terms of users or AUM or trading volume if it's public information. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what I can share there. But I, I will say that we uh, in 2020, we, we launched a few different programs. We launched our concierge onboarding. So we recognize that people are new to private keys. You know, most of the world still doesn't have any Bitcoin. And so we, we have our team of experts that will walk people through setting up keys, building a vault, and then we even include uh, a little bit of Bitcoin in the vault. And then we also launched our OTC desk. So now once you have your vault set up through us, you can purchase and sell Bitcoin directly uh, into cold storage multi-sig where you hold the keys. Um, now, without getting too specific, you know, we... we uh, we've been doing kind of record volumes in, in pretty much all of those. So now in one week, we will do pretty much the same volume of concierge onboardings as we were doing in a couple months last year. And uh, we're growing the team pretty dramatically. Um, we, we closed a, seri- a seed round in March led by Nidig, um, and they invested uh, $5.5 million into our company as well as uh, $50 million of, uh, of lending um, capital. So we, we have very quickly gone through the, the, the 50 million and are now uh, looking to, to find more capital to lend out to Bitcoiners who want to use their Bitcoin as collateral. Um, so we're, we're growing very tremendously. We're, by the end of this year, we will likely be you know, doubling or tripling the size of our team. And Nidig is one of my favorite, fun, favorite funds and they've really been active. Uh, and uh, I think I definitely secretly wish that Bitcoin principal companies like yours succeed and overtake uh, the competition. Which of these products, uh, Phil, are available globally and which only for the U.S.? Sure. So today, our vault program, which again, allows an individual or a business to or a trust to collaborate uh, to secure their Bitcoin for the long run is available internationally. Um, We have our concierge onboarding. Um, As long as you source the two hardware wallets, we can walk anyone around the world uh, through concierge onboarding. We unfortunately can't ship hardware wallets internationally today. And then we're still working on uh, international licenses for our financial services. Um, so the, I, I think kind of the most important product is available to everyone, which is just making sure that you don't lose your Bitcoin because, you know, we've all kind of discovered the most asymmetric bet in the history of humankind. But the only thing we have to do is not lose it for about 10 years, which is extremely difficult. <laughs> so hopefully the, the vault program really uh, solves that issue and helps you feel more secure about your Bitcoin. Uh, but yes, that's available internationally. And then um, we we lend in to a limited extent in Canada and in Australia today, and then um, on a one to one basis, we may have some availability in other countries, but we can't really uh, promise. We have to look into each country because each country has different kind of uh, lending regulations. So we will get uh, to many many more countries as soon as we can, but we are a very uh, conservative company when it comes to the the regulations because you know part of our um, part of our, our our company is really that we want to be your lifetime financial services partner in Bitcoin. So we're we're not trying to rock the boat. We're trying to be very conservative and, and go through all of the um, all the processes that we can to make sure that our clients are safe. So three main products, Unchained Vault, uh, the lending uh, product, and that you can buy Bitcoin. I want to go into each one of them, but my absolute favorite, Unchained Vault, it's um, the first, uh, dare I say, usable multi-sig wallet out there. And so really love the innovation you have done with this product. Tell the audience how Unchained Wallet differs from other wallet solutions like BitGo or uh, custody solutions like Gemini or Coinbase Custody. Sure. So let's start with um, let's start with the sort of the yeah custodians. Um, the way that the custody solutions work with Coinbase Custody and BitGo and Gemini is that you have an account with them. 
And typically, they are holding the keys to your Bitcoin. I think uh, BitGo may, uh, may generate keys and give it to their clients as one of their options, and I'm not super familiar with that. Um, the difference is that you're trusting them with holding private keys. And while, and really, those businesses map much more closely kind of one-to-one with the legacy financial system, where you have an account with a bank, and the bank worries about the security. Um, that's the easiest way to get started for most folks. But Bitcoin, again, is a very different beast than, than fiat currencies. And so what you start realizing is that, well, it's not so much how the custodian is holding the keys to the Bitcoin that matters so much as it is how you access your account. And you know when you're logging into your Coinbase account, for example, you're securing it with a username and a password and a two-factor authentication. So it doesn't really matter how they're holding the keys to Bitcoin. Um, it matters how you're logging into your account. And the accounts are all uh, remote hackable. So you know there's 2FA, but actually just recently somebody posted a great thread about how their 2FA was circumvented on FTX ex- exchange. Um, so you can, you can still get remote hacked even when you do have uh, 2FA enabled. And the, the categorical difference with us is that we never see private keys. We help clients through our concierge onboarding to generate their own private keys. And we make it very uh, clear and like never to share them with any of us, any of our employees. Um, and then we use public data, public keys to construct a multi-sig address. So the, the difference is that you really don't need to trust Unchained Capital at all because we've set up our platform so that we can disappear and you can recover your funds at any time. You know, that's the other kind of big issue with the custodians is that there's a lot of kind of counterparty risk there. If something happens, you know, if the, the regulations in your jurisdiction change and these companies can't do business with you anymore, like your accounts shut down, doesn't matter how your Bitcoin security you can't get access to it. Um, the other thing I like to think about is we're building at Unchained kind of a mesh of keys. So by, by using three keys for every vault that our clients create, um, you know, we're securing significant amounts of wealth with hundreds, if not thousands of keys. Now compare that with um, you know, Coinbase or a Gemini or a BitGo. They're trying to, since they hold the keys as a company, they're trying to minimize the number of keys that they're using to protect client funds. So you have significant amounts of Bitcoin secured on a handful of keys. So it's, uh, it's a little bit more centralized. It's a little bit more fragile, right? It becomes a honeypot. So we think that our solution of using uh, collaborative custody and keys distributed among multiple parties is really going to make Bitcoin overall much more secure and robust because if there is an issue, it happens on the margin. It happens to an individual person. It doesn't happen to the entire cohort of clients, which is just different from the the, uh, you know, the custodial solutions. Yeah, multisig has now been available since a couple of years. And it's actually really tragic that none of the large exchanges, they have so many resources available at their disposal that they do not have multisig solutions, user-friendly multi-sig solutions yet, which is just uh, almost unfig- unforgivable. Um, I also talk to new Bitcoiners and I tell them that, yes, in the beginning, if it's convenient for you, you can go for a custody solution, but you will always have to keep answering this question whether you should trust your custodian. And the ultimate solution is when you do not have to. So start the journey and uh, to take control of your Bitcoin, it might not happen the first day, but over a couple of months, it's not that difficult. And especially with a product like Unchained Vault, it's not at all. I think the only question that I have is, and again, as you mentioned, it's not only how the custodian keeps the keys, it's also the uh, possibility of your account being uh, you know, hacked. And that's the other thing, the phishing attacks, which uh, you know, again, for non-sophisticated users is something that I'm always concerned about when I'm trying to recommend uh, solutions. Does Unchained need any, you know, user verification or KYC, which can then be used for phishing attacks? Yeah, so I think there's a few things there. Uh, w- one thing that I wanted to just touch on and, and agree with you completely about is holding keys. So we, you know, you're, you're new to Bitcoin. You've just understood why you're interested in Bitcoin. You want to get some. That's unlocking a huge kind of mental block in your mind. 
Um, but it's my perspective that you're not actually using Bitcoin. You haven't joined the Bitcoin network until you take control of private keys. And that moment where you take control of private keys is nearly as profound as the moment where you understood why you wanted Bitcoin. So it's it's always one direction. As soon as you understand Bitcoin, it's my view that you're a Bitcoin user for life. And then as soon as you take control of private keys, it's my view that you're going to be extremely unlikely to ever go back to a solution where you're giving up more private keys than you need to. Um, so, so yes, I do. I'm a very strong believer in holding keys. And I think, you know, Bitcoin really is holding keys because that's what gives you permissionless access to your money. And, and the unconfiscatable uh, nature of Bitcoin is, is actually holding keys. Now, your, your second question was about uh, honeypotting. Uh, or phishing. Um, so that is, you know, there's nothing really. So, so when you, when you set up an account with Unchained Capital, what you'll have is a username, a password and two factor authentication. Now you could get, you know, hackers are pretty creative. So maybe, maybe you do end up getting phishing attacked and, uh, log into, uh, a hacker's version of Unchained Capital. The account that you have with us isn't what is securing your Bitcoin. It secures information about your Bitcoin. What secures your Bitcoin are your private keys. So even if somebody were to get access to your account, um, what they could see is information about your Bitcoin. So they would be able to see your balances, but they would not be able to move your funds out of your, uh, out of your vault. And that's really what makes us so different is that um, the account that you have with us, while it's important, it protects information about your Bitcoin. It doesn't actually protect your Bitcoin itself. Um, now, you know, the other scenario is uh, the, there's there's been ledger ledger email hacks, uh, email attacks that happened kind of recently where people were emailing clients, emailing ledger users if they were in their database about entering their private key into a computer. Now, never enter your private key or your seed into a computer. But um, even if, if you did do that and you were securing your funds in multi-sig, the hacker would not have the ability to spend your funds. So that's why multi-sig makes you so much more secure is you can have one entirely compromised key and that doesn't cause a, a loss in funds. So a couple points there. Um, you know, Nobody can ever prevent... I think social engineering, but the way that we do things makes social engineering just so much more difficult and less productive that um, the alternative is just to you know go and hack somebody who's using Gemini, right? And that's going to be way easier. <laughs> so there's no there's no perfect security solution, but we try to layer on as many different assumptions and hurdles as possible for our clients. Um, even beyond that, so since Unchained holds a key, uh, you can ask Unchained to sign a transaction at any time. But we also have video verifications. So if you ask us to sign a transaction and you have video verifications enabled, now if somebody has broken into your account, um, you know, and they've circumvented your 2FA, then they try to get us, our signing team, to sign a transaction and they have to spoof a video. Um, on top of that, they have to have multiple physical private keys. So they have to find where you live and get your private keys or unlock your hardware wallets. Um, again, nothing is impossible. But we've layered on so many different hurdles and assumptions that it makes it extremely unlikely. Yeah, I would be very careful in recommending the ultimate solution to custody uh, someone's Bitcoin and Unchained, Unchained Vault is one of them. So I just this is the last time I'm going to say it. I really love the solution. <laughs> You know, because uh, the only other possibility of a multi-sig solution is using Electrum. And you cannot recommend that uh, to regular people. I mean, the user interface and everything is a lot more complicated. Um, and, uh, you know, you have this kind of web version, but has all the security of multi-sig in your hardware wallet in Unchained Vault. I know Casa does something similar, uh, but I still um, really enjoy the simplicity uh, that this product uh, has. What do you charge uh, customers for using Unchained Vault? For a personal vault, uh, we actually don't charge any setup or storage fees. Uh, we have, again, the optional concierge onboarding where if you'd like our help, uh, we'll hop on an hour call for you. And that that does cost uh, $1,250, US but it comes with $1,000 of Bitcoin that we deposit back into your address once it's been uh, constructed. Um, and then we just charge if we are asked to sign a transaction with our key. Um, so multi-sig, again, it's, it's not proprietary. It is native. It's 
built into the Bitcoin protocol. So you wouldn't really expect to pay an ongoing fee for single signature addresses once you have a hardware wallet. So we thought probably doesn't make sense to pay uh, a subscription fee or any long-term fee for a multi-signature uh, address. Now, where we do charge is, is for when you set up a business account. Um, so if you onboard a trust or a business and you need to use the business logic to you know, cooperate among your team, that's when we do charge a annual fee of $250 for a business or trust, uh, as well as uh, a monthly fee if you have more than two users that need to collaborate and, and secure funds. So one of our big releases from last year was yeah, our business accounts where now multiple employees can hold keys and we have different permissioning. Uh, so maybe one, one user um, has full access, another user can just log in and download statements and reports for accounting and auditing. Um, and, uh, and yeah, we're expanding those as well. So what we would like to see is we'd like to see the larger uh, businesses out there start holding their own keys because um, it, it actually does make you much more secure and it eliminates counterparty risk. So we, we designed our platform to, to eliminate all single points of failure. So Unchained Capital is one of those points of failure. Our clients individually are a point of failure. Um, by having a company hold one key, it makes recovery and inheritance very easy. Um, by having seeds, the physical kind of 24 or 12 word list that you generate, um, it eliminates your hardware wallet manufacturers as a single point of failure. Um, and, and yeah, we really think about that uh, very critically and, and try to design our platform to be as trust minimized as possible. Yeah, and again, for the audience, I just want to say that as Phil kind of explained, the multi-sig is a native protocol solution. Unchained is, can you can think of it as a user interface of that protocol, just like maybe Gmail is on the email protocol. And that's why um, you can be you can feel very secured about the product. The other thing I love about the product, which of course I know, is that your charges are the way they are. And they are not a, like a traditional finance percentage of AUM, which I just do not see any sense in paying, uh, especially in an asset which goes up, uh, you know, which doubles or, you know, increases by 10x over a couple of years. You think that you end up start paying a small percentage of the purchase price, but it quickly becomes a significant amount over a period of time and when products like yours exist. Uh, so I, I love the fact that you have a fixed monthly fee and you, even for the personal vault, you only have a fee when you need to use the, um, you know, the third-party key uh, recovery service. So, so again, even from a charges point of view, have absolutely no problem in recommending Unchained Vault. Thank you. And I'd like to just talk a little bit about the philosophy there. So it's my perspective that you know, Bitcoin has many, many innova innovations. Uh, one of the innovations, of course, or the most uh, fundamental innovation is that it's the only money that has a provably scarce and fixed supply of 21 million. But the way that it goes about doing that is it increases in decentralization over time. So it's, it gets extremely expensive to attack and extremely cheap to defend the Bitcoin network. So you can run a full Bitcoin node on a very, very cheap, low power computer. Um, even to this day, the entire database of transactions for over 12 years is 300 gigabytes, very small. Uh, and then on top of that, it's extremely, extremely cheap and if not free to secure Bitcoin. So once you take control of the Bitcoin, you know, you can build multi-sig for no cost and you have the same level of security as sophisticated institutional <laughs> custodians. I mean, there's no magic to Bitcoin transactions. Someone somewhere has a private key and you use the private key to apply a cryptographic signature to a transaction. So yeah, we we didn't think that we would be able to build a company off of the idea of just kind of charging AUM for security because security is going to trend to zero in Bitcoin. It's going to cost almost nothing to secure it. Um, even today, like I said, you know, you can set up institutional grade custody on just open source software at the library. You know, you don't even need to own a computer to be able to secure millions of dollars worth of wealth. Now. If you have millions of dollars worth of Bitcoin, probably best not to do it at the library. But, <laughs> you know, just as an example, um, yeah, you can just generate keys using open source software. You can combine that into multi-sig and uh, you're on your way. We even open source a lot of our technology with this tool called Caravan, which allows folks in the browser to build and spend from multi-signature wallets um, wherever they'd like from any computer without logging into an account or anything. It's just multi-sig in the browser. 
Uh, we used Caravan as our trust minimized recovery tool, um, which again, eliminates Unchained as a single point of failure. You basically just have a file and you have your keys and you can use Caravan to recover and spend your Bitcoin, even if the apocalyptic scenario happened where you know Unchained Capital were to just disappear. Or really, if you couldn't access your account for any reason, as long as you have that file and your two keys, you can use Caravan, you can even use Electrum, although it's a little more challenging, uh, to recover and spend your Bitcoin. So yes, Bitcoin's extremely, extremely expensive to attack, which is why it's, uh, it, in my view, it, it probably will never be attacked um, in, a, in a very sophisticated way in the future. And then it is extremely cheap to defend. So if the government bans Bitcoin, you know, your, your private keys don't just disappear. <laughs> you have your private keys, you can just move your Bitcoin to wherever you would like. You can walk across borders memorizing just a set of 12 words and then conjure up your wealth. Uh, in another country if you need to. Yeah, so in the middle, I was always, you know, just like because you mentioned about Bitcoin security costing zero, I was always confused. Should I recommend different solutions to different category of users? And then I realized, no, holding your keys, keeping, the, you, you know, having a simple Bitcoin wallet is the ultimate solution no matter who you are. And, that, and so I've made it very easy and I just recommend, um, you know, just all users should finally go down this path. And Caravan is another example why, you know, Unchained um, Capital makes all of these products. And it's it's really sad that other companies do not have such products, which, you know, you keep uh, coming out, um, you know, one after the other. And the next one, which again, sticking to Bitcoin's principle is your lending product. Tell us again, how does it differ from other crypto lending companies like BlockFi? Sure. So you can think of, Again, BlockFi is sort of similar to Coinbase in a lot of ways in that it's a one-to-one -one mapping of the legacy financial system onto Bitcoin. So you have an account with BlockFi. You send Bitcoin actually not to BlockFi, but to their custodian. So they're paying, I believe it's Gemini to custody client coins. Uh, then they're commingling client deposits and they're taking that and they're lending it out to a third party. And that's how they're able to pay out yield and uh, offer kind of low interest rates. Now, that works just fine in legacy finance because if something goes wrong, the Federal Reserve or a central bank can just bail them out. In Bitcoin, the risk compounds with every counterparty that you introduce. So it's an immutable currency, right? So <laughs> like if any mistake happens, there's no getting your Bitcoin back. Now they might say, oh, we're insured for X amount of dollars or X amount of uh, whatever currency uh, you're, you're using. But um, but yeah, what happens with Bitcoin is the, the as the value increases, the, the currency or the insurance becomes less valuable. Um, so the way that we do lending, again, is using uh, Bitcoin's native technology. We collaborate to construct a multi-signature address that is dedicated to our clients. Now, our clients can't hold a majority of the keys because you know we're taking on risk by lending US dollars out. So the Bitcoin is put into this address that looks like any other Bitcoin address, but the client holds one key, we hold a second key, and then our third party key agent holds the third key. Um, so the Bitcoin for the duration of the loan, you know, you post 250% collateral to, to the principal you take out. So for every $10,000 you take out, you post $25,000 worth of Bitcoin into this address. Um, but then there's no rehypothecation. We're not taking client Bitcoin and lending it out. Um, you know, the Bitcoin isn't at any well, I mean, there's some counterparty risk with a loan, but it is significantly reduced counterparty risk. Like Unchained Capital couldn't do anything unilaterally to cause you to lose Bitcoin. Um, and so, yeah, it's really just designed for people who are treating Bitcoin as their long-term multi-generational wealth and you know want to preserve that above all else, but then would like to access some dollars today to you know make a home purchase or something like that. Um, so yeah, it's been a really fantastic product. We we do charge slightly higher rates, I think, than our competitors. But again, we're completely different in terms of security. Like with the competitors, you're introducing many, many layers of counterparty risk um, and custody risk because they're actually sending the Bitcoin around to the different parties. Um, and that's just completely avoided. So we actually think on a risk-adjusted basis, we are um, very cheap for loans. And what is the interest rate that you charge for USD loans against Bitcoin as collateral? Yeah, so the, uh, the, the interest rate it changes depending on the duration of the loan. So for a short-term loan, like a three-month loan, that's half a percent origination fee. Um, and then I believe it's uh, we're at about 9 or 10% interest. And it's monthly only interest payments. 
Um, and then for the longer term loans, uh, up to three years, it's 1% origination fee and then roughly 13 or 14% uh, monthly interest payments. Um, and uh, yeah, at the end of the loan, you have the, so you're making just interest only payments every month. And then at the end, you have the option to just roll the loan over into a new loan and just pay another origination fee or, you know, liquidate collateral to pay off principal or send in fiat to pay off a principal. So a bunch of different options. Uh, there's no prepayment penalties either. So if you need to close out your loan early, um, we're flexible there. I think the other really interesting aspect of that of these loans is um, because we're not taking client deposits and lending them out, if the value of Bitcoin increases and your loan is way over collateralized, once per month, you can move the Bitcoin out of your loan into like a vault or into another wallet where you have full control over the funds. So we have some flexibility there to allow you to you know, withdraw some of your collateral. Now, a lot of folks just like to leave their, their loans as over collateralized because the alternative is true too. If the price of Bitcoin crashes too far, you'll hit your first margin call at 150% collateral to principal. And then at that point, you have two days to uh, pay off uh, principal or put in more Bitcoin as collateral. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's kind of the risk. The risk, risky side of, of Bitcoin lending is um, Bitcoin is extremely volatile. And so, you know, you do have to be prepared for the March 2020 style events where Bitcoin doesn't do what you want it to do and it crashes 60% in, you know, six hours. Um, so we... we we never want to uh, get into a position where we have to liquidate client collateral, which is we we actually adjusted our loan to value ratio to 40% to help kind of with that buffer. So now I think it would have to be a 40% Bitcoin drop before you even trigger your first margin call. Um, so that's been, I think, really good and helpful for our clients um, to kind of help them to manage the risk of, of taking a Bitcoin collateralized loans. Yeah, there are many people who are interested in these products. Of course, BlockFi is really doing well. And most people come with a traditional finance background where uh, they are not normally using an asset as a collateral, which increases 100% every year. And so in Bitcoin's case, that's what I tell them. Your biggest risk is not losing your Bitcoin. It doesn't matter if you end up paying a couple of a percentage points more in interest. And I would any day use a pay higher interest and keep control of the Bitcoin, which in Unchained Walls, you do not lose control like you do uh, with other products like BlockFi and Celsius. Unfortunately, you are still only available in the US <laughs> uh, and very, you know, very sporadically outside the US. But uh, I again love the fact that I think you are the only company which lends Bitcoin out and still keeps the principles of Bitcoin, does not rehypothecate. And th that's the reason it, it's, uh, you know, so interesting. What is the buy Bitcoin product that you offer and how does it differ from exchanges? So last year we launched our OTC desk. Um, and what, what that looks like is we, we pair you with a personal trading team um, over encrypted chat. And once you have your vault set up, you can, um, during our, our trading hours, which are 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., you can request pretty much any size trade above 50,000 US dollars. So you can say, hey, quote me on you know seven figures of Bitcoin. We'll give you a price. If you like the trade, um, we execute the trade. And then, uh, you know, as soon as the funds are hitting our account, the, the, the fiat currency hits our account, then we're able to move uh, Bitcoin into your vault. So for very large sums of Bitcoin, uh, we, we are, it, it's pretty magical because you execute a trade with us. And then later that day or within one to two days, a large chunk of Bitcoin shows up directly into your control. So we charge half a percent up to $1 million. And then we have a little bit of flexibility in terms of um, trade executions uh, beyond seven figures where we're able to adjust the price to be competitive with other OTC desks. Um, and uh, and yeah, then really the benefit is you, you, you get Bitcoin right into your vault. So I'm not sure if, if you've made a, a very large Bitcoin purchase, but sending Bitcoin out of an exchange is a bit nerve wracking. So we take care of that for you and just place it into the highest level of security so you don't have to move it at all until you're ready to um, start using it in some other way. Any new products, uh, Phil, coming soon? Any Sunny Bitcoin special announcement? <laughs> well, kind of along those lines. So um, it's a combination of our concierge onboarding and our OTC desk. Um, we we are going to be rolling out for clients who are interested in making a $500,000 or higher purchase directly through our OTC desk, uh, a 24-hour turnaround for getting you onboarded to multi-sig. 
So within 24 hours, uh, you can show up, ask for $500,000 plus of Bitcoin. And by the end of the next day, you will have uh, your vault set up and your trade executed. And then Bitcoin will appear in your vault um, within either then like hopefully the next day or potentially the following day. But we'll get you completely through the process and onto the Bitcoin standard in 24 hours. That's amazing. I have uh, Bitcoin mastery videos on my website where I teach, where I have videos on how to create a Trezor wall, a wallet, a Bitco wallet, but users can now just pay you $1,250 and get the entire one-on-one -on -one training and then get Bitcoin worth $1,000. So my job is easier. Uh, that's great. Uh, Phil. Uh, these are, that's the reason I was excited because I wanted to get this product uh, to my audience. Phil, what are your views on the current Bitcoin price? Uh, well, I think right now it is alt season, uh, which to me means that Bitcoin is getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. So I think that we, I, what this reminds me of mostly is about June of 2017, when the alts were all kind of going nuts and everyone was talking about the flipping and Bitcoin's dead. And then Bitcoin went from $3,000 to $20,000 in the course of like three weeks. Um, it feels pretty similar to me uh, as, as that time. So I'm expecting Bitcoin to just kind of go nuts. You know, at some point, enough new liquidity will move into Bitcoin where the altcoin speculators are not going to be able to convert their altcoins back into Bitcoin and, and end up with less Bitcoin than they started with. So when I speak with a lot of, so I'm not a trader, I'm, I'm a terrible trader. All I've done is just bought and held Bitcoin for six years. <laughs> But I tell people, like, measure, if you're trading, measure denominator in Bitcoin, because you might think that you're doing well measured in fiat currencies, uh, but the train might have left the station and you'll never get the number of Bitcoin that you could have had. Um, so definitely start thinking with Bitcoin as the denominator. And, and it actually, in my view, uh, really illuminates the, the rest of the world, too. You can start measuring stock markets using Bitcoin as the denominator, housing prices, food prices, everything decreases in value on the Bitcoin standard um, as Bitcoin gets more valuable. This is like the best conversation, right? Because two Bitcoin <laughs> maximalists talking to each other, I mean, it's such a relief, right? <laughs> especially in the current scenario. And I, I posted an article because everybody wants to know about Ethereum and Dogecoin. What are, you, what are your views before I share mine? You know, I, I think Bitcoin solved this problem of creating something that is digital and scarce. And because it's digital, it's now the most scarce thing that we've ever seen, maybe outside of our time here on Earth. Uh, and Ethereum and Doge and all the other altcoins are just proof that it's extremely trivial to create copies of things that are digital. Um, so, you know, e Ethereum, in my view, is is pretty much the closest cryptocurrency equivalent of central banking that we have. So the, it has all of the, you know, the, the insider trading and the cancel on effect and, you know, 65% of it was pre-mined. And now it has all of the kind of uh, decentralized financial services, DeFi, but really none of them are all that decentralized because BitGo is holding the keys to the Bitcoin. Like you always, always be asking like, okay, it's decentralized, but who's holding the keys? Because there's no magic to this. Somebody somewhere is holding keys. Uh, and then Dogecoin is, um, it, it's, a, it's a comedy currency. I mean, I think it's the most honest out of all of the altcoins because it's very clearly not trying to be anything. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I'll never convert my Bitcoin into any of those. And I think what a lot of people don't recognize is that whether they like it or not, they're kind of on a Bitcoin standard now. And so that's the question that you have to be asking is what, what is it going to take to get the, the crazy Bitcoiners to start converting their Bitcoin into another currency or good or service? And uh, the answer is, is generally that they're not going to. <laughs> Absolutely. Last week, I you know posted Bitcoin versus Ethereum versus Dogecoin on my website and using Bitcoin as a as a denominator to measure the prices of these cryptocurrencies, which is so obvious to people like us, but maybe not that obvious to new, uh, you know, new people who are new to the crypto space was exactly one of the points that I used all the graphs in Bitcoin. And in fact, I think Michael Saylor has a website. I think it's called Saylor something. Uh, in Saylor. Which he's, 
Yes, yes. In which he's uh, pricing all the assets in Bitcoin. So you can see the stocks, you can see real estate all indexes in uh, Bitcoin, which is just exactly what you mentioned. What are your views on NFT? <laughs> I think you have to do a lot of mental gymnastics to uh, find NFTs valuable. So NFTs don't really solve the problem of proving that the person who created the NFT created the work of art. It doesn't solve the problem of uh, mapping you know, physical art to an ownership in a digital world. Like You still have to trust the you know, NFT platform and the NFT creator. Um, I think actually one of the most... Uh, or, one of the things that I heard recently is that it's a very easy way to launder money that you've just earned. So you create your own NFT, you buy it from yourself, and then you've made a sale. Um, so I don't know. I, you know, they're not all that interesting to me, and uh, I, I will never convert Bitcoin into those. Uh, before we wrap up, you can you know just inform the audience how people can find you and they can find Unchained Capital. Sure, you can find me uh, on Twitter at at Phil underscore Geiger, and then. Um, or email me at phil at unchained.com. And then our website is just unchained.com. So definitely check us out. We have, I think, the best series in the industry on just Bitcoin it, with Parker Lewis's Gradually Then Suddenly series. It'll answer really all of the questions that you might have about Bitcoin, why it can't be copied, why it's not too slow, why it's actually good for the environment, um, stuff like that. Uh, so really great series on our website. And then, you know, if you do want to uh, get set up, uh, we have concierge onboarding for individuals and businesses. Uh, just keep in mind that for clients outside of the U.S., we we can't ship hardware wallets, so you'll have to source the hardware wallets yourself. But then we're happy to help you set them up and and go through the entire process. Uh, so yeah, definitely check out our website. Thank you so much for having me, Sunny. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I was really excited about this podcast because you're among the f- handful of companies which is Bitcoin only. Phil, thank you for doing this and thank you for coming on Sunny Bitcoin. Yeah, really appreciate it. Thanks for having me.